Konnichiwa, metalheads. Here we are with another Battle of the Bands. Who are we listening to? We're listening to Ingwie Malmsteen on one hand and Unlucky Morpheus on the other on Far Beyond the Sun. Far beyond the sun, which is here on Earth. Where are we, <laughs> we are. It's, it's about Earth. <laughs> it's a song about Earth. Um, it's a, you know one of the most important songs in guitar playing and in the history of shredding and neoclassical guitar, um, electric guitar, um, and was created by none other than Ingvi Malmsteen, who is or Malmsteen. I don't know how you pronounce it in English. He's basically made his fortunes outside. Sweden, but he's Swedish. Um, and in, um, in 1984, way back in the history of, of metal, he uh, recorded a wonderful album called Rising Fire, um, among others on keyboards on this album was Jens Johansson, who later became a member of Stratovarius. But anyway, at the time, uh, Envy recorded an album that basically had two songs defining the genre of instrumental guitar, uh, music shredding uh, as, a, as a guitar picking style. And one is Black Sun and the other one is Far Beyond the Sun mm -hmm. from the same album of 1984. And there, these songs are just... I think in an interview, Ingvi said that he would play these songs until the day he dies, because they are the songs that simply define his music. Um, and I will just say one more thing before we actually go to listen to. There are two, two important things, maybe. One is that at the time, in the 80s, Ingvi was really uh, one of the stars of metal music. Because, um, and he was not alone, of course, he was a part of a trend that promoted instrumental uh, metal music. So what we will hear today is two songs without any singing. Um, so that's kind of unusual for today. I don't think people do this any longer. But at the time, it was something that defined um, defined the genre. Like you can think of Satriani and some some other guitar giants who made their name by just playing guitar songs. And the other thing that I would say, which kind of has a bearing on the song, is that uh, Ingvi said in several interviews that one of his inspirations was classical music and in particular violin, and even more particular, um, the work of Paganini, who is one of the fastest, com like one of the composers who uh, designed the fastest key change and uh, uh, finger, finger picking for, um, for violin. So Paganini, Ingvi, and then from Ingvi, we will move to Unlucky Morpheus, and there's a nice connection over these things. But I think we should start with the original. This is the version from the album uh, of Far Beyond the Sun. There is a longer and very, very nice uh, live version that uh, has Ingvi improvised on several other songs, uh, adding three minutes to, uh, to the original uh, from his concert live in Leningrad in the Soviet Union. Uh -huh. He was one of the few Westerners who, who actually uh, played there. Um, but well, aside from uh, Hasselhoff. Yeah, Hasselhoff was there. <laughs> there. There were a couple, of course, there were a couple, but most of the time the Cold War meant like even culturally a separation. Not for not for this guy who traveled and recorded his live performance in an album and a video um, video recording as well. But that one is very, very extended with lots of inspiration from uh, other songs. So I think we will stick to the album version from 1984. Okay. Far Beyond the Sun. Curious. Thank you. 
Oh yeah. Wow. It's massive, massive. Wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, how many times can you see that, right? Yeah, I think uh Okay. So I know there's a violin coming. And yes. I love violins, but I mean, <laughs> on, on the low side, that's a nine and a half, yeah. maybe a ten. So I don't, I don't know if anything can beat that. Really. It's hard. It's hard. Did you hear, or I don't know, because I, I listened obviously to, to several, several times just recently to this. Did you hear the duel or the the interplay between the the keys and the and the guitar? I don't know what I heard. It, it was, was awesome. Like, it was. Like awesome. I lost it. Yes, it's fantastic. It's one of my favorite songs. Uh, Really, um, and uh, from from you know the child child uh, uh, contact contact with this because he's so old, right? So I I've can never listen heard to it. it. No, it's no. really good. Um, that was awesome. I recommend also Black Sun, like the two the two pair from songs of this of uh, Rising Fire, really great. So anyway, so we have this, which is a classic. A lot of the uh, guitarists refer to Ingvi as one of their guiding stars because uh, he's just a pioneer in this type of playing the guitar, electric guitar. Um, and in Japan, this has been the case because, as we discussed in several of our Japanese-related metal episodes, the musicians in Japan who play metal have a classical training. So yeah. they have uh, basically been growing up kind of in the same culture as Ingvi, and so they relate to his uh, to his style and his music style uh, or his guitar playing style also influenced a lot of the Japanese shredders including Su from Shu uh, I was going to say yeah from Galnerius <laughs> oh he he uh, Shu says clearly in in several interviews that growing up he referred to Ingvi's picking style and so on so no no surprise there maybe which that which would be more surprising is to hear this song converted or interpreted for violin mm -hmm. uh, and this is kind of a, mm -hmm. it's a very meta level right because we have Ingvi's inspiration is the violin concertos by, by Paganini with a bit of uh, Bach in, involved and then kind of we're going back to the violin who interprets the guitar who interprets the violin so it's very um, you know second layer there uh, we're going to hear Unlucky Morpheus uh, without their two founding members. So um, we will have Jill on violin taking the taking the front seat in this version and Jinya on guitar uh, being her dueling companion. So pay attention to this dialogue between violin and electric guitar because maybe that is the spice that can make this song be a Valiant Go above cover. a 10. <laughs> well, we'll see. It's hard. It's hard to be. But this is also very new. It's from an upcoming Unlucky Morpheus release. Uh, and this song just came out in 2021. All right. So, Curious. Far Beyond Times the two. Sun um, and Unlucky Morpheus with Jill. Hit it.
very cool. Oh, it is so amazing. I, I this is gonna be one of these things you simply cannot choose for me. Um, but yeah, they're awesome. For me on the drums, just kicking it with everything he's got. Um, yeah, and a six six uh, six strings bass. <laughs> yeah. How cool. Um, Very cool. However. <laughs> <laughs> the moment of truth. However. Uh, yeah. For me, clearly, uh, Ingvi. Ingvi wins. Uh, takes this one. And, um, which is weird because I, I love violins. Um, and I really love, and I think later on in the channel we'll have some examples of instrumentals where the, the violins really make that. But I do think that the violin, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, is a support instrument. Uh -huh. It's really not a lead. Uh, and it's really hard to adapt. Um, I think you said that it's the the Ingvi version was an adaption <laughs> from a violin yeah, version, yeah. but uh, it's so much easier for a guitar to lead. And that's why I think that, the for me, the Ingvi version was, uh, for me, was yeah. better. I thought the Unlucky Morpheus version was an awesome adaptation of that guitar version, but the violin just cannot hang with the guitar as a lead instrument, I think. For the metal part. Yeah, I think the best, and I, I've, I have a few examples in metal where uh, the violin really kills it, but it's because it comes through at a certain part in the solo and really shines for a couple seconds and then goes back into support. Uh -huh. uh, so that's what I would say. What about you? This is really very, very difficult. I've been thinking about this, obviously, since I knew the songs from before. So I've been debating with myself, what am I going to say? What am I going to choose? And I simply cannot, cannot choose because this is one of my favorite songs, too. So it's very hard to choose. Normally, there would be no doubt that I would go with Wingvi because I know the song inside out. Like, I can... I memorize it, basically. But of any other versions that I've ever heard, this is the best. Like, if, if Ingvi is a 9.5, like, of a 10 absolute that doesn't exist, uh, this is, like, a 9.3. Um, so? But I think Ingvi still wins for me, <laughs> still wins for me, but by a, by a hair, by a hair. I really, really enjoy the dialogue between the violin and the guitar around minute three, I think. It was just like, pwah! They basically tease each other. And um, I, love, I love the drums. They're much more powerful. And violin, the Jill's violin is very soft and warm and kind of heavy. Like they, they really made the best out of the best violin for metal is this. Yeah. And I would say as a, in as this a, leading role, as a huge violin fan, uh, I would like, I hope that videos like this get more um, violins into metal. Yeah, I would because, love to uh, see that. I would love to see that. And honestly, I think Jill is the amazing she's just like mind-blowing um I, I think you already know that she's been playing since she was a small child i think at three she already could play the violin so that she could you know demonstrate that and she even is a paganini um, specialist mm. so this is totally her home territory i actually was curious if any of you guys know in the comments which violin she plays like uh, what type of violin is it that um, she's using in this in this video maybe she said in some interviews or so so if you do know i would be very curious to find out but yeah it was really very tough and for me it's partly because of habit partly because i know that original so well like in other songs that we've played that i knew from before uh, but if i only heard this if this was my first choice this would have been again up there close to a perfection yeah good battle Good battle. So, uh, yeah, obviously this was a really tough one. Let us know in the comments if you feel that one or the other is a clear winner or if you're also muddying through like, like us here. And um, yes, um, I'm looking forward to the new release from Unlucky Morpheus coming later this, this year. Absolutely. In the meantime, may your sword stay sharp and your quest ending glory.